Auto poles, roll out. Okay, uh, that was terrible, I apologize. Hit the skip button, skip, 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 skip. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here at my studio in Manhattan with a bunch of auto poles set up. Why? Because that's what this video is about today. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm a pro photographer right here in New York. You can check out some of my work at Last X Witness on Instagram. Yell at me on Twitter. Join me live on Twitch. All the same name, Last X Witness. Uh, and if you're into stuff like photo or lighting or anything like that, go ahead and check out some videos on this channel. You might like it and hit subscribe if you do. All right, now that that's out of the way, what is up with all these auto poles? Well, what are auto poles? And I know a bunch of you are rolling your eyes right now like, oh, I'm a photographer of 30 years and I know everything in the world and auto poles or whatever. Yeah, they're staples to us, you know, they're like C stands to us. They're, they're just typical standard. They should always be in every uh, studio type grip, right? Or even home studios or anything. I'm gonna get into all that cool stuff. But the reason I, feel, I felt the need to do a video on them was because we're in the era of people who are coming from basically their phone to whatever camera some schmuck with a dumb haircut on a YouTube channel told them to buy. And they've never assisted anyone, worked on a set, rented a studio, been in a studio. And there's been plenty of times, especially in here when I've done workshops, where at least two or three people like take me and be like, hey, what's uh, what are these things? And it's kind of astonishing when you're around something every day, you kind of forget, oh, maybe some people don't know about this. It's not something they see all the time. Well, auto poles are awesome. When I first heard of auto poles when I was a kid, I was like, oh, do you just press a button? And they're like, Wah. no, they're not automatic like that. Uh, they are just mechanical and they come in various heights. They come in various colors. There's different latch mechanisms and all sorts of stuff like that. But what is the basis of an auto pole? What does it do? Well, basically it's this. It lets you put a pole wherever you might need one. And what does that allow you to do? Well, it allows you to put up a structure without disturbing the space. So I can run two of these, put a crossbar on it, and boom, I have the ability to hang a backdrop. But not only that, I can hang other things from it too. And when we're doing stuff on cool locations or like beautiful antique buildings and stuff like that, or whatever you want to call them, old architecture, whatever, you can't start drilling into walls and stuff. I don't care what permits you got or how well you know the guy who owns the place. You can't do that. Although, talk to some of my DP friends uh, out there, the indie guys, and they, they just carry a hammer drill uh, just, be, just in case. But really, think of it this way. If I wanted to have people sitting at a table in the middle of a room and light a scene for them, and I'm in a restaurant, I don't have the right lights that I want, I can put one of these in either corner, run a bar across it, which I'm gonna show you in a second how to do that, and then I can put in light, eh, lightweight, light fixtures of some kind to create the atmosphere I want without disturbing my environment. But the really like main reason people use this is background stands. So I think what people don't realize is these are varying in price from about $100 to $200, depending on what you get. I mean, Frodo has been like the staple in making these, but there's plenty of other brands out there. I think Koopa makes them. There's third-party brands with no name that makes them and all that stuff. Obviously, you get what you pay for. I've had the same Manfrotto ones forever. I think that the really great build quality, and uh, I think I've never regret anything Manfrotto, to be honest with you. Uh, but they do go up in price. You're talking about maybe like $60 more in the grand scheme of things, but I haven't really seen them go over $200. Uh, they do come in like black, silver. I've seen them in white. I've seen them in other different colors. Sometimes people paint them uh, just because they're going to be in a room and forever and they just want them to match the room so they look like pipes maybe uh, but they come in various heights as well so some of them might only go up to nine feet in height some of them might go up to 12 feet there are extension poles to make them even taller but here i, I think i feel like i got off on a tangent there with the background stand systems they can go 200 300 and you're stuck with like usually a janky system isn't that great and they take up a footprint so these on either end, just have these rubber cups that might leave marks on your ceiling. And by the way, you, you, that's how you know if someone's been filming in an area or something used to be a studio or you're in a studio. If you see marks like this, you know that someone's been throwing auto poles around and used the place for filming or shooting of some kind. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, I think that's like our telltale when we walk into like a peer space and we're like, oh, uh, someone's totally been using this to shoot. Anyway, or an Airbnb. Oh my God, don't even get me started. Okay, so pretty much with the background systems or just stands in general, you're talking about you know a circumference of space on the floor for the legs to spread out to sustain themselves, right? Well, these just go up and down and flush to the wall. So when you're using a background system, you usually have to be off the wall by maybe even a foot, and then you lose room in the room. You lose actual 
footprint area to actually build your set. So if you're in someone in like here in New York with a small apartment and you're trying to put up backdrops all the time, if you have a background system, you're already killing a foot or two of space that you might not even have. That can be 10% of your room in some cases, right? This lets you go right against the wall and run a crossbar and you're as close to the wall as you can without, uh, um, aside from like, just taping the background up. If you've seen my other videos where I can show you how to put up a background, you tape the end of it up and let it roll down the wall. That's cool, but obviously that's like a temporary setup in a really if you need to situation. Uh, but if you want to have the roll up here and, and let it cascade down and be able to cut it when you want to, this is probably your best bet. And not to mention when you're not using the background, you can use them for other things, or you can have multiple backgrounds. You could put one set of this on one side of the wall for maybe a color, right? You do something vibrant like an orange or a yellow, blue, whatever. And then another set on the other side, and that can be your gray paper, your neutrals or whatever, like, like you know, a thing like that. And then all you're doing is asking your subject to go from one side to the other, and you're getting more shots out of it, right? And this is investment. This is things that you know you're gonna have for the long haul. No matter what camera system you use, no matter what lights you buy, whatever you change over wise, it doesn't matter, these stay the same. It's grip. Grip stays with you forever. And you can always sell it, to be honest with you. People buy these all the time, uh, secondhand and stuff like that. Uh, but how do these actually work? Well, this is how it is, it's packed up. It's very lightweight. It obviously doesn't take up a lot of room. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the ceiling, by opening up this lever. Am I on camera? Yeah, I am. I'm in frame. And you just let it go all the way up. It hits the ceiling and you push it in. And then once you push, pull, uh, push this lever down, it goes up just another half inch and that creates the tension. So that is what you get. So obviously, this probably isn't even straight to be honest with you, but obviously you don't put up a ton of weight on this, right? You're not gonna watch and boom, it's down. So this isn't meant to be like, let's hang a whole Ari sky panel off of this thing. No, but I can hang something light like clip lights or maybe even run a microphone across the room. Or if I don't wanna put something like truss into the wall to run cabling, if I'm doing something uh, that's just for the, uh, that just for now, something that's not there forever, or maybe it's just something that's in like a room in your house that you're doing for a podcast and you wanna film it but have nothing in the way. You can set up from end to end, put the crossbar and run your cabling across and now it's out of your way, no tripping hazard, stuff like that. Let's talk about getting that crossbar though. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. There actually is more than a couple of ways, but I'm gonna give you like the most common ways. These are super clamps, right? Super clamps are super. No, they're, they're another staple and uh, Dan Norton, I think, has a super clamp video on his channel. You can check him out, Daniel Norton Photographer. If you guys really want me to do a super clamp video, write me a comment below and I'll, uh, maybe I'll do it. But what's cool about these is not only do they clamp to everything, but you can get J hooks for them. J hooks are great because they go right into your 5 8 socket, you tighten them down, and then all you gotta do is put them onto your auto pole. You wanna put it here, you put it up here obviously so you can back where it could be higher, and then the crossbar goes here. And you can use anything. We here in this studio, we use these giant wooden dowels all the time. Some people use just straight up pipes uh, which are cool too, or anything that just goes across that stays rigid that doesn't weigh a lot. Easy. I mean, you can get really cheap pipe to do that, and then you put your paper on it, use an A-clamp to hold it where you want it, and then that's it. But this is not just the end all, because you can also put a J-hook onto a, an auto pole, and like I said, if you're in a situation that you are on location, you don't want to carry around a giant 10, 11 foot dowel or pipe, you can have another auto pole and the auto pole will fit in it as well. So now I can extend this across the room and have a crossbar for whatever I might need. I think one of the coolest things I saw was someone using it to do a whole microphone setup for a bunch of people at a table and they all had their own microphone pointing at them and stuff like that. Uh, that I, I was like, oh, hmm, because I don't usually set up audio too much. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I've seen plenty of times people put lighting on them. I've seen people rig all sorts of things that aren't that heavy. I've seen people put GoPros on them, all sorts of stuff. I've even seen people rig them to put signage up so that people that are not part of the location that we're at because it might look like it's a public place kind of get a warning of like, don't come in here. It's like, it, 
you know, when you're on location, you're working with a crew, like all bets are off, whatever works, works, right? Um, I wouldn't say that this is the most stable thing on earth. I wouldn't trust this for everything and also check the specs of what you're doing uh, as far as will it work. When it comes to using them for just straight backgrounds though, what you wanna do is make sure you get two auto poles that are the same and you can actually buy them in sets to save a little bit of money. I think they come in two or four, uh, but you wanna make sure that the flange over here is all the same and then you're going to basically just tighten down your, your super clamp with the J hook on it like that. And you're pretty much good to go because wherever you put this, if, it, if the ceiling is the same height, then it should be at the same level as the other J hook, right? So that's basically what you do is you level them before you put it up. Then you put it up their level if the room is level, because if there's like an I beam or something like two feet lower, you're gonna have to eyeball it a little bit. Uh, it usually doesn't need that much precision. The other option you have besides J hooks, which is pretty interesting, is you can take two super clamps like this. These are another thing that I feel are just staple, right? Like you should have at least one. They're super useful, they're super dependable. You can do so many things with them, they're very versatile. You, you've seen me talk about them in the articulating arm video. If you haven't seen that video, check out the link below. You'll see how Dan Norton used them in the subway to rig a light up without stands. So they're super useful, right? And especially with something that's just a straight up pole, you can clamp anything to them, right? Within reason, remember, keep weight in mind when you're doing something like off of the auto pole. If it's not braced like one to another one, is that how you say hi to everybody? Jeez. So keep that in mind. You don't wanna to have too much weight coming off of it because they're not really in there for good. They're just a temporary press fit. Anyway, you can set them up with the 5 8 post in the socket and then take the other one and set it up basically perpendicular. And when you set it up perpendicular, 90 degrees, ah, you like those words? Let's tighten this down just to get this so I don't look like a complete schmuck when it fails. Basically, just get it onto the auto pole, clamp it down, and then what, look, I have an open clamp here to run another pole lateral, whatever I want, really. I mean, I can set up whatever I can clamp on here within reason, but you know, you really kind of want to just use like another auto pole. You can do that. You can just put it in there and then tighten this down and then next thing you know, I have an auto pole that can then go into another auto pole over here or something like that. If I don't have a wall, right? If I'm not press fitting this into another wall or structure or anything like that, this lets me have a freestanding crossbar for whatever I need. And keep in mind, that's kind of what grip is. It's to be able to build what you need to work to rig, to support things, no matter where you are. So you kind of just want to get really familiar with grip, know what your options are, the different clamps, the different stands. I just hit myself in the temple with that. That was great. Now I should actually mention this. Uh, this is one of types of the, of the auto poles. I think this is the newer kind. There's, there's a few different kinds, but the most common I'd say is this. Some don't have this red button, but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. This red button right here, once you open this up, pull it all the way, and then you're ready to clamp it down, you'll actually see it goes an extra half inch, right? Well, this is the release. So in order to actually release it from the structure, I have to push this in, then pull this out, and I'm good to go. It takes off all the pressure. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Some other ones are just like a harder press. It goes like over a bump and then settles in like a bearing. But this is, I think is the newest kind. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. You guys tell me that anyway. <laughs> let me know when I'm wrong anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of pretty much it. There's a lot of other tricks. I want to keep these videos a little shorter. They, send, they tend to do better when they're shorter. Uh, if you have any other weird setups or tips or tricks that you've been doing with all the polls, let me know down below. I mean, it's always great to learn from other people. And it's infinite, right? We, there, there's always a variable. No, no set is ever the same. And that's kind of where you start growing your experience level where you go, oh, this worked that time. Maybe it'll work in this space or something like that. Uh, I love auto poles. Don't take them off as an option because I know some people get intimidated by like bigger grip and it's not something fun like, oh, look, a lens that gives me more bokeh or something stupid or presets or whatever. Think about this. If you're in a small space constantly shooting, this will let you do more in the small space. That means everything you're doing gets an upgrade. Think about that.
If you're in a room that only has 10 feet of space to shoot in and you're using a background stand, you really only have about eight feet to work in now. This will get you as close to the wall without having to drill into that wall and losing your security deposit. Just saying. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for me. Um, I'm gonna leave some links down below for a few options as far as getting auto polls go. If you have any questions, hit me in the comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to like, it really helps out this channel. If you like this video as well, uh, check out some other videos on this channel. I'm really trying to grow it and I've been putting in some effort into the production value and stuff like that. So hope you guys are into it. Don't forget to share this video around, that helps as well. Hit subscribe plus the bell to get notified more videos like this come out. And I'll see you guys next time, later.